Hello friends, welcome back. In this video, we are going to discuss about the kernel objects. In this video, we will take an introduction about the kernel objects. And in the next video, we will discuss about the process kernel handle table. So let's start. What are the kernel objects? Kernel objects are basically used by the system processes to manage various resources like the memory, like the different processes, different threads, files, etc. Kernel objects are also used by the applications. These applications might be managing some resources like the processes, threads and the files. These are some of the examples. Then the other example is to manage the synchronization among threads like semaphores, mutexes and events. These are the kernel objects which are used to synchronize the threads which are running under the different processes and are trying to access the same resource like any printer or any other device on which only one process or only one thread should be having some access. It may be some file as well where only one thread at a time should be allowed to write and other threads should wait if one thread is writing something. Kernel objects gets allocated in kernel memory. What is a kernel memory? Basically, there are two parts of the operating system memory. First one is kernel memory, which is used to manage the kernel objects. All the kernel objects, which we are discussing here, all those are allocated in the kernel memory by the operating system. Their lifetime is managed by the operating system in this memory area itself. The other type of memory is user memory. All these applications or all these softwares that you see while they are running, all those are loaded into the user memory. So user memory is used to manage the softwares and some device drivers. There are few essential points that you need to note regarding the kernel objects. The first one is the uses count. Uses count represents that how many threads are using the resources represented by the kernel objects like the files, mutexes or the semaphores. Suppose there is a file and there are three processes which are trying to access the same file. Then first of all they must need to acquire this kernel object to synchronize the access. So if these three processes or you can say these three different processes and through the threads they are trying to access the use uh, the uh, file object file kernel object then in that case the uses count for the particular kernel object will be three because three processes are trying to access the file then the second important point is the access who can access the kernel objects the answer is there are Windows APIs which have been provided by the operating system using which a developer can access the kernel objects. There is no direct way to access the kernel objects. You can only do it through the APIs. Then the other important point is the security. Any kernel object has a security attribute associated with it. The security attributes describes like who can access the kernel objects, who can create the kernel objects, I mean who can get the kernel objects created through the operating system because all the kernel objects are created by the operating system itself. There is no way you can directly create the kernel objects. Operating system creates it on your behalf. So if you provide the security attributes as null then in that case the default attributes will be applicable. Suppose you are a user and as a user you have been provided the right to access the files to access any of the kernel memory objects like, uh, like semaphores, mutexes, events etc. So in that case if you have logged in as that user and you have provided the null as the security attribute pointer then in that case you will get the default security attributes applicable to you. 
every kernel object has a pointer to the security attributes. Security attributes is a, date, is a structure which has been declared in one of the supporting header files in the windows. Then the last essential point is like who can destroy the kernel object. The answer is there is no such API using which you can destroy the kernel object as a developer. There is no such way you can use to directly destroy the kernel object. Once the uses count becomes zero, OS itself destroys the kernel object. We have already discussed about the uses count. Suppose there are three processes using a single kernel object, for example, the file. So once all the processes will be done accessing the file, then in that case, the uses count will become zero. Once one of the process will stop working on the file, then the uses count will become two if the number of processes which were working on the file was three. Then after that, if one more process is done, then the uses count will become one. And after that, when the last remaining process also done, then in that case, uses count will become zero. And once the uses count becomes zero, then the operating system itself destroys the kernel object. It does not allow any of the developer to destroy the kernel object. There is no such API exposed to the developers using which you can destroy the kernel object. And the reason is obvious. The kernel objects are used system wide. If some other process is also using that kernel object, then it should not be allowed to any of the processes to decide if he is if he should destroy the kernel object or not. So I hope you must have understood the concepts here. So in the next video, we will discuss about the process kernel handle table.